What's going on YouTube? Ian R Sports here once again with another episode of our very favorite podcast show. What's up, brother? How you doing? I'm chilling, man. I see you got the nice Penny Hardaway shirt. Throwback, baby. You got that Vince Carter throwback, very first edition of the Toronto Raptors. Uh, guys, we hope you're doing great today. First and foremost, before we, before we go any further, we want to encourage you to continue to push ER Sports. We want you to hit the like button, share in social media, comment, but most importantly, guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. He, he and our sports needs your help. The more subscribers we get, the bigger we can make this show and the better we can make it for you guys. Um, and we're going to go forward. We're going to go ahead and talk about our 2019 offseason for the NBA uh, free agency. But um, before we go with certain free agents, we're going to talk about uh, possible trade destinations. Our last episode, we talked about Anthony Davis with the whole New Orleans Pelican saga. Uh, our next subject is going to be from the Philadelphia 76ers, uh, their young piece, Ben Simmons, bro. Uh, as we know, Ben Simmons was drafted, uh, didn't play his first year, but is becoming a breakout player in the NBA. Uh, a lot of people have considered him to be the next LeBron James, um, but hasn't really, I don't want to say has fit to the standards, but I mean, he's been everything that they projected. You know, the guy's a triple-double machine. Uh, he has absolutely no jump shot, though. And, uh, I mean, I, I, when it comes to the NBA, it's all about what you're doing. And the last two years, Philadelphia has lost in the second round. And when stuff like this happens, you know, teams start to panic. They hit yeah. the panic button. They start talking about trading scenarios. And we've been hearing that a lot lately. You know, Ben Simmons' name has been flirting around out there. And, guys, that's what we're here for. Whenever a, a trade rumor goes on, we want to talk about it because we know you're out there typing on YouTube, Google searches. Every time you're searching about something new, ER Sports is going to talk about it. Yep. So, brother, I have a possible idea where I think he fits the best. But first and foremost, I've done a little talking. I want to hear a little bit from you, bro. What do you think about this Ben Simmons situation? Uh, bottom line, I really think it's uh, it's far-fetched. Uh, a lot of things that you hear online is exaggerated. And we hear videos as well exaggerated as well. Um, as I said in our previous video, I do believe Ben Simmons can be a jump shot away of a, eventually or yeah. potentially being the best player in the NBA at the very least being at Giannis and the Kupo's level. Um, but he hasn't worked with that jump shot and you saw it in the playoff guys and you can say bottom line what cost Philadelphia that series even though they took it seven games to a final shot, um, that crazy Kawhi Leonard yeah, shot, mad props to him. But um, bottom line, I feel that Philadelphia team was so talented, it shouldn't even have gotten to that shot. Yeah. I do feel if that series didn't wrap up in seven games, it probably should have been wrapped up in six yeah. in Philadelphia, as opposed to going back to the game seven in, Phil uh, in Toronto. And bottom line is this, so uh, Ben Simmons, uh, three years into the league, uh, that jump shot has not improved at all. Supposedly that he worked in the offseason on that jump shot, and we just haven't seen it. And in today's NBA, bottom line, um, you have to be able to have some resemblance of a jump shot. That's yeah, a jump shot lead. Yeah, it's a jump shot lead. It's a shooting lead right now. And considering Ben Simmons, um, the way his game is predicated right now, he's become a liability on offense. So uh, he's a great rebounder. He's a great core vision, great defender. Like I said, he's every he checks the mark. He has a check mark in every single spot that you can think about in the position in the point guard. Uh, the only thing is, is his shooting ability right now, and that's why you're starting to hear him in rumors. Like, okay, is it the best way to go ahead for the Philadelphia 76ers to go ahead and trade Ben Simmons? Go ahead and move him on to another team? Mm -hmm. Maybe go ahead and bring another piece and um, make him uh, a focal point alongside yeah. Joel Embiid? Or do you continue to ride his way? I'm one of those, you don't give up on great talent, potential talent, especially like Ben Simmons. Um, but that's not why we're here. Yeah. You know, we're here to talk about the rumors. We're here to yep. talk about trade gossip. And I saw a trade that got thrown out there is uh, LeBron James. So what are your thoughts? Man, uh, I heard the same thing too. I know that everybody in the TV is saying things like stop or it's a ridiculous move. I think it's incredible. I think it's a great move. If I'm the Los Angeles Lakers, if that offer is out there, i do it. Now, obviously, it might not be the best. For who? Who would you do it? For who? If I'm the Lakers, I do it. Oh yeah, I don't even think about that offer. Oh, I take so if you're Lakers. Oh you're yeah, you know, okay. Hang on, bro. Let's be. Let's talk about one thing. The Lakers is complete trash. I mean, what's going on in that organization is garbage. If I'm LeBron James, I'm not regretting making that decision. But I'm trying to think, what can I do to get the hell out? If you're LeBron James at this point, you left Cleveland, you went to the Lakers because what yeah. Magic Johnson told you, and what's going on right now, you don't know where you're going. You're 34, going on the 35. You're supposed to be at the point of your career right now that you're, you should be winning. 
Every year he should be contending. That's what he's that's what he's predicted to be. So what can he do right now? He can go to the Philadelphia 76ers, which is the team, by the way, that he was considering going to before he made the decision to go to the Lakers. So if I'm Philadelphia, I'm pushing all my chips into the table because you need to win now. It might not happen with Ben Simmons or Joel O'B. So what do you do? You take Ben Simmons out and you put the better version of Ben Simmons, and that is LeBron James. How does Philadelphia do it? You ask. Very simple. Philadelphia throws in Ben Simmons, and then they get a piece, possibly like Tobias Harris. They work a sign-in trade. I know people were saying Jimmy Butler, but no way. If I'm Philadelphia, the first person I'm throwing is Tobias Harris. Work at Tobias Harris, Ben Simmons for LeBron James. You bring in LeBron, you have Joel Embiid, you re-sign Jimmy Butler, and you have a new big three in the East. And with LeBron, Jimmy Butler, and Joel Embiid, there is no way that team does not make the NBA Finals next year. And they could be possibly play, be playing in the NBA Finals against a Golden State Warriors team without Kevin Durant. So that's a huge possibility, man. If I'm the Philadelphia 76ers, that's what I'm doing. Now, is it the best decision for the Sixers? A lot of people might say no. LeBron's 35. How many years does he really have he left? Now, we know LeBron's a freak. He's a genetic freak. For all we know, he's going to be playing like this until 37, 38. But just like we saw this year, he went down with a groin injury. Father time waits for no man. So we don't know if this is the best decision for Philadelphia, but if you're in win-now mode, which Philadelphia is, because when you get that sweet taste of championship glory, you want it that bad, man. Philadelphia needs to make this, and they need to make this now. So uh, you guys see the shirt. OBJ, I'm always grateful. Uh, LeBron James. So we're talking about a uh, 12 age, a uh, 12 years age difference between Ben Simmons and LeBron James. Yeah. So obviously you have that part that will work against Philadelphia. Uh, I'll explain the reason why I could see the trade working out for Philadelphia um, in the short term. Yeah. And obviously, if you when you talk about LeBron, you always got to talk about the short term. All right. So um, you have to start with Joel Joel Embiid. What is his shelf life in the NBA? He is a superstar. I said in previous videos, he could potentially be the best big man in the NBA. Um, but there's a concern about him. There's a concern about his knees. There's a concern mm -hmm. about his back. There's a concern about his foot. There's a concern about his arm. There's a concern about his head. Um, he's had everything checked out in terms of the injury report. But um, bottom line, he is the man right now. He's a beast right now. And maybe Philadelphia, even though how much I felt about Ben Simmons, maybe you say, okay, you know, we have a window. You know, right now, Joel Embiid is maybe about, I'm sorry if I misquoted, 24 years of age, possibly. Yeah, 24, 23, 24 years of age. Yeah. But you have to wonder, will Joel Embiid age gracefully? Unless he just decides to drop some weight, work on his dieting, physical mm -hmm. condition, and everything. Bottom line, there's nothing, there, there's much to be said about the prior injuries that he's had. Yeah. So you have to think about Joel Embiid's shelf life. And it could be possible, even though we see the best of Joel Embiid, which is could be the best player in the NBA potentially considering his talent. It might not be in a long term. It could be like a short term. We could probably only see the best of Joel Embiid for the next four or five years. Yeah. So it's quite possible, unfortunately, that earlier rather than later, you can start to break down yeah. right by the age of 28, yeah. 29 years of age. So I can see Philadelphia saying, you know what? Maybe we don't have as long as we thought. Yeah. We do have the best of Joel Embiid right now. And we'll have the best of Joel Embiid considering his injury history and his prognosis moving forward. Maybe we could get the best out of MVP type level for the next three or four years. That means LeBron James timeline. Exactly. So maybe you say, you know what? Okay, we're ready to do this. We're going to pull the trade. We're going to trade Ben Simmons. We're going to bring in LeBron to Philadelphia. Assuming he's fully committed, I think Philadelphia could get, be a contender. You mentioned about the signing trade of Tobias Harris. A signing trade doesn't necessarily have to happen. If they, if Philadelphia go ahead and just outright renounces uh, Tobias Harris' yeah, so uh, yeah. hard rights, yeah. in addition to J.J. Redick and Amir Johnson, they could easily fit in LeBron James into their cap, along with uh, Joel Embiid. Um, the tricky part could be Jimmy Butler. Yeah. Um, how they maneuver around that, because it doesn't matter regards how you happen, with, how you move, maneuver with Tobias Harris. Um, it will really get a little tricky with Jimmy Butler. It's possible. It is possible. They have to go ahead and renou renounce the rest of their rights exactly. and um, see. And pretty much they're going to be on the books with just LeBron, yeah. Joel Embiid, and Jimmy Butler. Yeah. But it is definitely possible. So you talk about a big three of uh, Jimmy Butler, Joel Embiid, and LeBron James. And the Fister timeline, LeBron James is on the contract for three years. Well, two years, the third year will be a player option. But um, it's quite possible. It fits the timeline. Jimmy Butler, who's going on the age of 30 right now, 
you can go ahead and you can max them out along with Joel and B and you can go with a three, four year project that will happen. Now, obviously, if you're trading on um, Ben Simmons, you're abandoning your long term. You're thinking about short term. Exactly. So I could definitely see how I could make it happen. You but the process, the, pro the this whole process thing wasn't about making it to the second round of the Eastern uh, Conference. The process was about winning the championship. So when you're in a win now mode, sometimes you have to make these deals to do it. Look at the uh, perfect example: our favorite team, the Miami Heat. In no. 2004, they had Dwayne Way, uh, this young core. They went to the second round in the, East, uh, in the Eastern Conference, and they had this building block. And all of a sudden, Shaquille O'Neal became available. And what did they do? They put all their young pieces besides Dwayne Way to get Shaquille O'Neal. Sometimes when you're building these blocks, something better just comes along. Yeah, and you absolutely. just have to throw in all the chips to make this offer. And I'm telling you, LeBron can be that saving grace for Philadelphia. Especially with everything that's going on right now with the, uh, in Los Angeles with LeBron. It's the perfect fit, it's the right move. Another team I recently heard about that we briefly talked about. I don't agree with it, but I'm just gonna mention it because I know you guys are probably hearing these rumors. So apparently there's an offer or the, the potential offer for Houston Rockets offering Chris Paul for Ben Simmons. No. 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 So let me talk about. No. It. So let me talk about it in theory. In theory, yes, it's a fit. Is it realistic? No. That's a little rumor that came out on YouTube, guys. If you go ahead and search YouTube, you probably could have seen that trade float around Chris Paul for Ben Simmons. It's a great trade if it was Chris Paul was four years younger. Yeah. Um, but but to go back right quick, guys. So like I said, that's not really so much realistic. We're talking about more the Lakers and the 76ers. So we mentioned how beneficial it could be to the Philadelphia 76ers. And I think it would fit their timeline. Jimmy Butler, you go ahead and you offer him a four-year max. Maybe not quite like, not quite the five, but you offer him the four-year max. You have LeBron for another three years at the very minimum, maybe he'll rip for another year. And you have him beat on the contract for another four years. So that's why I think the trade would fit for the Philadelphia 76ers. It's not that I'm preaching it. It's not that I'm saying Philadelphia should do it, but in theory, it missed their timeline. And then it will give you three to four years to see how Joel Embiid progresses. Yeah. As a player. And it's the best fit to try to win now. Yeah. Now, if it does happen, uh, we mentioned Philadelphia for the Lakers. I think it would be just fine for them. Yeah. I mean, the word Doug comes around. But then again, you go ahead and you trade LeBron James. Even though for the next three or four years, LeBron James is going to give you near, if not at the MVP type level. At least for the next yeah, three years. At, at, the least, very at least. least LeBron is LeBron. But on the flip side, you bring in Ben Simmons, you're bringing in a 22-year-old potential exactly. all -star, if not superstar. Like we mentioned, I mentioned it in yeah. previous podcasts, I still believe he has the talent to be perhaps the best player in the league if he can develop that jump shot. You go and you bring Ben Simmons and you can have Magic Johnson as your tutor to go ahead and show you, you know what I'm saying, what it takes to play the point guard position at that height. Because uh, Magic Johnson was not the best shooter as well. You know, yeah. a lot of people could probably uh, look back in the 80s. We're not back in the 80s. We mentioned it in our first podcast. But at the same time, Magic Johnson, over the years, developed the ability to go ahead and hit that open three-point mm -hmm. shot. He wasn't the best perimeter player, but when the shots were available, he would make them. Yeah. So I believe that Magic Johnson could go ahead and mentor Ben Simmons at that level. And I think Ben Simmons is young enough and has enough respect for Magic exactly. Johnson that he can go ahead and learn on his tutorship. And now the Lakers, if they make a trade like that, now there's not really this pressure to go ahead and make a trade for Anthony, Anthony Davis. Make a trade for anybody else. Make a big, big splash in free agency. Yeah. You pretty much told your Laker team that, you know what? We're not going to win the championship right now. But we have this centerpiece in Ben Simmons. We're going to start to build around him and develop him into that next superstar. So you keep Kyle Kuzma. You keep Brandon Ingram. You could probably keep Alonzo Ball. You got the fourth overall pick. Build around him exactly. and build an empire around him. And exactly. if they do it the right way, in five to six years, eventually they could build another statue of Ben Simmons next to Ben exactly. and next yeah. to Kobe. And he's pretty much the second coming of Magic Johnson. It's not like LeBron. LeBron's coming to the Lakers at 34. He's in the twilight of, of his career. Now you're getting really the second coming yeah. of Magic Johnson. He's very young. He has a, a, a good 10 to 15 years mm -hmm. in his career. And like you said, they'll be able to keep all those guys. Kuzma, Ingram, Ball, Josh Hart. And now there's not as much pressure as mm -hmm. playing with LeBron. Because when LeBron comes to your team, it's championship aspiration. There is none of this 
building and waiting yeah. and seeing. So there's all this anxious and nervousness that goes with these young guys. You yeah. put Ben Simmons in the Lakers with all these guys. For all you know, they become a 50 win team. Yeah. You know, everybody stays healthy. Hopefully, Brandon Ingram doesn't have a problem with the blood clots. You know, Ben Simmons there. I think it's a right fit. It works. Uh, everybody might have a lot more fun. And for all you know, you know, having fun leads to wins. With LeBron, he has all this stress within him to win. Yeah. He devotes that stress to his teammates. Know, we so. saw that this year. It's not a bad thing, you know, but some guys just can't take it. You know, Kyrie, right. Dwayne Wade, these are guys that can handle it. Some guys just cannot. Um, but, I mean, you know, we move with the Lakers. I know we talked a, a couple seconds about the Rockets. I don't see that happening at all. I know it's a fantasy thing, but for Chris Paul, no. No. I'm not even talking about it. No. But anyways, guys, so we, we, we talked about the Lakers. I don't, know, I don't know if you have anything to add, brother, on the Lakers. I mean, guys, you know what I'm saying? You know, I throw my wall card on every video and everything. As you see my Kevin Durant free agency video, you'll be able to go ahead and catch that. Catch that when you can. Also, Anthony Davis, yeah. that's another one. You can go ahead and catch that as my walk. Who's my wall card team? As I call the end. No one is probably because getting the first pick. <laughs> um, ben Simmons does get a lot more trickier. If I had to go ahead and call a wild card for any team, if there's really one that comes to mind, guys, it's not somebody who's going to you know, throw you off your seat, now like my Anthony Davis or Kevin Durant video, um, maybe the Brooklyn Nets. The Brooklyn Nets, and maybe you say, you know what, um, in terms of what we're getting from like Ben Simmons, this is the best we're going to get out of him in terms of his shooting ability. We're moving into a league where it's all predicated around shooting. Maybe Brooklyn potentially go ahead and dangles D'Angelo Williams. D'Angelo Williams, and they say, you know what, do we believe really D'Angelo Russell? I'm sorry, D'Angelo Russell. Yeah, there you go. football. There you go, guys. All right. Hey, it's Saturday night. Freestyle yeah. Saturday night. All right. So D'Angelo Russell. Russell. All right. So D'Angelo Russell could be a possibility. He's up for a max contract, and he does have the ability to do the things that Ben Simmons cannot do. He's not quite the athletic player that he is, yeah. but D'Angelo Russell has shown the ability this year in Brooklyn, the to the playoffs. He could run a team. He could score the basketball. He can shoot all-star. the basketball, yeah. and he's, he's an all-star point guard. And alongside Joel Embiid. That could be a nice fit. Maybe it won't just be D'Angelo Russell. Maybe you can go ahead and you go offer along with that a Joe Harris. You offer a Joe Harris who has the ability, obviously, hit the three-point shot. He won the three-point contest, yeah. the three-point shooting contest. Or maybe you could probably dangle Spencer Dinwiddie yeah. in there, who is one of the most improved players of the year this year. And Brooklyn now has the draft picks that mm-hmm. they can go ahead and offer in return. I'm not saying, guys, it's a slam dunk, but at the same time, I can see a scenario where perhaps Philadelphia says, like, you know what? Maybe this is not quite working the way we thought, and sometimes some the best player might not be the best fit. So if you decide to keep someone like a Jimmy Butler, like a Tobias Harris, you slide in a D'Angelo Russell Linder along with a Jimmy Butler, along with a Tobias Harris. Now you have no longer a liability on the court, all right? Because you now have five guys who can shoot the basketball: mm-hmm. D'Angelo Butler, Tobias. Yeah. And Joel Embiid and JJ Reddy, yeah. assuming they're able to keep them, the numbers are going to get really tricky. Yeah. Uh, guys, I'm big on numbers because D'Angelo will be a signed and traded. He'll be a restricted free agent, so there'll have to be some moving parts involved there as well. And you look at Brooklyn, if they don't believe that D'Angelo Russell is that max type contract, then you now have Ben Simmons, who you can go and you can build around over the next couple of years. So, guys, there's a lot of variables. Like I said, that's just one team that I threw out there that I think could be a possibility. I don't think realistic, but that's why I say wild card. It's always a wild card. So, guys, we want to hear from you. Obviously, um, the Ben Simmons trade isn't yeah. really it isn't really likely. Like, we bottom line, happen. guys, yeah. it comes down to like this. Okay, we don't really know if it's realistic, but yeah. we're just going off the, the rumors. Exactly. You know, what's that's what we're here for. Like yeah. I mentioned earlier, we want to be here for you guys. When you guys go into the Google search or the YouTube search, when you're discussing some of these trade rumors, it gets frustrating. You're looking up some more details besides what Stephen A and Skip and Shannon have to say. You're looking for some more inside stuff and you get frustrated because you don't find things. You know, that's what we're here for. Whenever things are being discussed, we're going to talk about it. We're going to dig a little bit deeper for you guys. We're here to entertain you guys. But obviously, just like we say in every video, if you guys want us to talk about something else, if you want us to talk about your favorite team, details with your team, that's what we're here for, guys. ENR Sports is here to entertain you the best way that we can. And how are we going to do that? With your support. We want you to hit the like button. Uh, send us your comments. Share on social media. And if you have not subscribed yet, guys, we want you to hit that subscribe button. By hitting that subscribe button, you're going to help us push this show uh, better for you and do it the best way that we can. 
And I mean, before we go any further, brother, you got anything else to add? My man, you said I'm out for it. Right, and shout out to Mr. P. Murray. We appreciate your love. And we promise you a video on the Phoenix Suns. Yeah. ER Sports for Life. We'll back out. Nats.